Hey, what's up guys? It's Steve here with another Blender tutorial. I got a fun one today. We'll be doing some fluid simulations and uh, making a wine glass with a little wine in it splashing around. It should be a lot of fun. It should end up looking like this here. And uh, it should be a good uh, introduction to the fluid simulator in Blender. So um, let's just jump right in and do it. So I'm going to start with modeling my wine glass. So I'm just going to go to 1, hit 1, and 5 to go into perspective mode here, and uh, delete my default cube. Now, I want to open up a reference image to follow uh, for making my wine glass, just so I get it right and proper and normal looking. So uh, I'll include the link to this in the description, but I'm just going to open up my, uh, my properties tab here by hitting N, and check background images, add image, open, and open my image. So you can see it's just a basic wine glass there. Uh, I want to raise it up along the uh, y-axis here. So I'm going to change the y-axis right here and place it so it's at the cursor there. Right there, that's good. I also want to make the scale a bit smaller. Um, these square boxes here are about three meters, so it could be quite a bit small. I'm just going to go one though for now, and then I'll have to adjust my Y again. So just the scale first and that would be better. There we go. So one on the Y and one on the size and it works perfectly. So to start, I'm going to use a circle. So I'm going to go shift A, add circle. And uh, I, think, I think I'll leave it at 32 vertices and I will not fill it with anything either. Leave it unfilled and 32 vertices. All right, so I'm gonna hit Z to go into wireframe mode and tab to go into edit mode and scale this down just so the vertices are lining up about the edge there and extrude. So I'm gonna hit E, extrude up along the Z axis and give it the bottom little lip there. Now I'm gonna extrude all the way up to about that point, holding Z to stay on the Z axis. Right about there, I'll scale it down like so. So you can see I have it lined up nicely there. Now I'm gonna come back and add in two or three edge loops, maybe three. Select that middle one, hit O to enable proportional editing. You can see if it's blue down here, it's enabled. And, uh, and then scale it down using my scroll wheel to adjust my proportional editing. And kind of give it just a little bit of that curvature you see there. So something like that, just to give it a little bit of a roundness shape is nice. And uh, I might do the same with the bottom here. Well, I guess the bottom doesn't really matter. We can leave the bottom like that. So there's our base to our wine glass. Now I'm going to do the same thing, extrude along the Z axis up to about there. And uh, before we get any further, why don't I add in a subdivision surface subdivision surface surface <laughs> modifier. So to do that, I'm going to hit control two and I'll add in a subdivision surface modifier. If I go over here at two and that's exactly what I want. So that is good. Now you see, I might have to adjust some of my vertices a little bit here for this one here. I'm just going to add in a crease to do that. You hit N to bring up your properties and then you can adjust the mean crease here. And I'm going to change that to about one just so you can now see, oh, right there, one. You can see now that if I tab out of that, it's a sharp edge there. Let's enable smooth shading too. So I can do that with the bottom one too. Maybe drag that down a little bit. Like so, and give that a mean crease of one too. Just so we have a sharp edge at the bottom there. That's what we want. So yes, I need to adjust some of these things here now as well. So I'm gonna hit Control R let me uh, first zoom out a little bit here so I can see my whole thing. Control R, you see I get that purple line there. And I'm going to scroll that down to about there. Now if I hit Z, all right, it's kind of hard to see, but my black line here is what I want to follow. So I'm going to do that again. Control R, scale down to about there, and just scale my mesh down until it's lining up nicely with my uh, curve there. So this is the edge of my mesh, and that is what I'm going for right there. So something like that maybe pull it down a little more you can see that's not looking too bad this might need to be scaled down just a tad and then maybe we can scale this one up again so i'm just hitting option and right clicking to select an edge loop and then scale it up a little bit all right so let's just keep going up the mesh here 
in edit mode with tab and I'm gonna put some more edge loops in here so I'll put one at the top here and then I'll scale my top one up like I said before just hitting alt on my loop here with right click and it'll select the whole thing scale that up to about there then take this loop with alt and right click pull it up to about there let's add in another edge loop Whoop. zoom out some more another edge loop so this is a lot of extruding and edge loops to uh, create this shape and this this kind of modeling I find quite fun actually um, doing the uh, doing the following with the reference photo and then just kind of lining the vertices up to the photo and uh, using edge loops and such so now I'm just going to extrude up about that far scale it up some more extrude up about that far scale it up some more following the curvature of this wine glass extrude up along the z-axis scale it up like so extrude out along the z and scale it's almost like a uh, connect the dots you can imagine it as when you're just scaling and lining it up to the edge of your mesh some of the easiest modeling you can do in blender and it's uh it's pretty fun and then you can see i'm getting to about the middle of the glass here i'm gonna not have to scale it up as much maybe now start scaling down just slightly keep doing the same thing extruding hitting z scaling extrude hit z scale yes i'm getting that curve nice now and it's looking pretty good extrude scale it's extrude and scale one more extruded and scaled very nice pull it down a little bit scale it up a little bit and you can see we have a wine glass it's uh it's not done yet but it doesn't look bad yet not at all it doesn't look bad yet it doesn't look bad at all um yeah i'm pretty happy with my curvature it might be a little wide here so maybe just control r put a loop in there and scale it scale it down a little bit same thing over here. I didn't put enough edge loops over here, I don't think. And it's a little bit wide. Let me see what this one looks like. Scale down. Okay, it's pretty on. And this one, scale down a little bit. This one can be scaled up a little bit. Very good. That looks good. And that's good. Now we need to quick do the inside of the glass for our wind simulation. So I'm going to hit 7 to go to top view. And uh, hit tab to go to edit mode and go to wireframe mode again with Z. All right, now I'm gonna select that top edge loop with option and right click. Very good. And uh, I'm gonna go extrude and scale, just to create a little bit of a lip there, something like that. And now I'm gonna go back to one front view and extrude with along the Z axis, pulling it down. And basically just kind of lining it up with my original cut meshes here, I'm going to I think this one needs to be scaled up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to be basically lining these vertices up to those, scaling them and keeping them a proper distance from the outside vertices. So basically, you can think of this as reverse, going down the other direction, scaling it up, keeping it even thickness along the edges here. Extrude along the z-axis, down to our next line of vertices about, and whoa, scaling to about that point. Same thing, screw down to here, scale up to there. But this time we're obviously going to end before the handle of the, whoops, scale. Very good. Before the handle of the mesh. I'm gonna hit end to close my property tab there. Give me a little bit more room. Extrude along the Z axis and scale it up. I have my screencast keys on as well. So you guys can just follow that if you want. Holding shift will give it a uh, slower, more precise scaling. If you need to get more precise, scale. Oops, let me turn proportional editing off now. Hit O and turn it off. Scale that down a little bit. Extrude along the Z. About there, scale it. I'm gonna hold shift now just because I wanna be a little bit more precise. Let me scale this one up a little bit. And we're coming to the bottom here and right around here is where I'm going to end. So I'm going to start kind of following that now. Extrude along the Z, scale it down to there. So we can get a little bit fatter at the bottom here, where it might be getting a little bit stronger and tighter. So kind of extrude, whoops, scale, something like that. 
extrude on the z-axis scale yeah that's looking pretty good maybe one more extrude scale down to about there now I'm just gonna hit extrude and scale now I'm just gonna go alt M and merge them at center to create a bunch of triangles right there and finish off my uh, circle so that's good we have our mesh and we have our inside of our mesh now I want to put a few uh, mean creases they call them <laughs> along the top here as well not a hundred percent so I'm just gonna go about 0.8 on my mean crease there and the same with the inside one option click it 0.8 is good and you can see we get that little bit of a lip there not like something that's super sharp that you might cut your lip on or something but uh, it doesn't look bad maybe put another edge loop in there like so yeah you could do one on the inside as well there we go that looks pretty clean to me and that looks like a pretty nice wine cup so uh, that will do it for our wine glass maybe scale this one up just a tad holding shift there pretty happy with that I don't need my background image anymore um, I think it's close enough that I don't need it maybe put another cut in here and then I can kind of whoops pull it up a little bit and then scale this one can't see it hit Z grab that one and scale it up a little bit there we go it doesn't match right there but that's just because the image isn't straight with mine um, that's not terrible that's not terrible these might be a little bit small Scale them up just a tad. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to turn my background image off now. We don't need it anymore. Just hit the eyeball there if you don't want to see it. That way you can always bring it back if you want. But that will do it for the base modeling. Now let's just make sure that our normals are all proper. So to do this, I'm just going to hit N. Scroll down to display or shading. Nope. Uh, it's, let me see here. I want to find, oh, I got to go to edit mode. I want to find my normals here, and I'm going to display them with that. Now, they're all pointing outward, and then on the inside, they look like they're pointing in. Yeah, they're pointing in there. That's good. Uh, just to make sure, you can always click recalculate, but it seems like everything is set up good. So let me turn that off now. Boom. And good. All right, we're ready for our water. So I'm going to add in... Let me just go to Z and tab to edit mode. And I'm going to basically duplicate some of my mesh here for my water mesh. So holding down Alt, I'm going to click that one, my bottom loop there, uh, and that middle point. Now holding down Alt and Shift, I'm just going to continue to click the strokes that I want. Not the outside, but the inside. That's very important. Make sure you're just getting the inside and not the outside. And I'm going to get up about, nope, about... Oh, that's the outside. Grab the inside right there. About that much of my uh, mesh. And I'm going to hit Shift D. And then I'm going to hit P and separate that by the selection. So now you see I have a separate mesh here if I tab out of edit mode. And this is my fluid. So let me uh, tab into edit mode, select all that. And I'm going to go Shift S. Oops. Shift S. Cursor to selected. Tab out of edit mode. Then go object transform origin to 3d cursor so that just puts my origin point on my mesh right there for the fluid now i can scale it down slightly like that so it's not touching any of the edges there maybe grab it up along the z a little bit and uh let me check the normals on this now because i want them to be pointing outward and not inward so um well hold on i'll check the normals after i cap off the top of this mesh so I'm just going to right click, select the top of that mesh there, and whoa, it looks like we've got an extra row of vertices there. So uh, you can just select your whole mesh, and yes we do, we got two of them here. So I can just go select all, here we go, A to select all, and then over here we go over tools, we can go remove doubles, and that removed all the duplicate vertices we had. That might happen to you occasionally, and that is how you fix it. So now I'm going to tab into edit mode, grab that first ring, extrude, scale it down, like so. Maybe lift it up a little bit. Extrude, scale it down, like so. And then extrude, scale, Alt-M, merge at center. 
All right, so there is our fluid and ready to be used. And this is gonna be our um, collision to our fluid. So I think that's it. Oh yes, I wanna quick check the normals. So tab in edit mode, select it all. And let's recalculate the normals on that. So shading UVs, recalculate. There we go. Very good, I can turn that off now. Okay, so let's start simulating. Let's get into the fun of it. Um, first, I'm gonna wanna set my camera up real quick. So in front view here, with my camera selected, I'm just going to hit Alt, Control, Zero, and it will snap my camera right in there nicely. I'm gonna pull it back, and I'm going to adjust the focal length to be about 80, or maybe more. Well, 80 might be good. I can just zoom my camera in some more now with grabbing it and hitting middle mouse button, dragging it in. There we go. Grabbing along with Z and pulling it out with middle mouse button. There we go. So let's start simulating. So first I'm going to select my glass. And basically I'm going to want to get some animation of this glass rocking back and forth to get that splashing water. But I don't want to do it before the simulation starts. I want the simulation to settle down in this cup and then I want to splash it around a little bit. So I'm going to jump to about frame 10 and I'm going to insert rotation keyframe. All right, so now I want to jump forward about four or five frames. Maybe four would be good. Rotate it this ways. Insert, hitting I, rotation. And then rotate it back this ways. Maybe another five frames. Rotate it back this ways, like so. Insert, rotation. And then a few more frames to kind of jump it back, like that. Insert, rotation. So you can see now, if I play this through, it goes just like that. And that's going to give me enough information to get some nice splash effect going in there with my fluid. So that's exactly what I want. And uh, good. Now let me add my domain in here for my fluid. Every uh, fluid simulation, smoke simulation, something like that, will need a domain, which basically tells Blender in what area we're going to be adding the fluid. So I'm going to shift A add in a cube, scale it down, lift it up, and basically my simulation will be right about there, but I'm just gonna move it like that. And that should be good. You go to top view and make sure it's lined up straight on it. Very good. You can always scale it up along with Z a little bit if you think it might splash up somewhat, so it would be appropriate like that. And that is good, that's all I need, as long as it's gonna stay in the whole time, and it should. So let's get into the fluid settings now. So to do this, I'm gonna click on my physics tab over here and select fluid. This will be type domain. Now I'm gonna choose my glass. This will be fluid type obstacle. And let me jump back here to frame one. Select my fluid. This will be type fluid right there. And that should do it. That should do it. No, that's not all we have to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to my domain object and we'll start with a low resolution for uh, basically messing around till we get our settings set properly. Now, our first setting to change will be our timeline. Time is in basically Blender seconds. So if we go to my render here, you see it's at 24 frames a second. So basically time is seconds. So four frames would mean 40 or 24 times 4, which would be 96. So I'm going to go for about half that. So I'm going to go 2, and that will be about 48 frames in Blender, if that makes sense. Because my setting is set to 24 frames a second, and this is basically seconds. All right, we'll leave speed at 1, and uh, let's go down to our fluid particles, or no fluid boundary. We want partial slip, and... We want some smoothing. So we're gonna go about 1.5 on our smoothing. We want some subdivisions because I'm going to be generating some particles, but a little bit goes a long way. So I'm just gonna go about 0, 0, 4. For my fluid particles, my fluid world. Now this is something that is very important. Um, I'm gonna choose fluid presets water, and that's already what it's set to. This is something that's very important. This is going to be the real world size, basically calculating what this is in the real world. 
and that would be the domain from side to side. And seeing this is a wine glass, maybe this is about two, two and a half inches. It's about twice that size, so this might be about four inches. And this is meters. This is three feet. So this is going to be very small compared to that. Let me see. So three feet would be about 0.3 to be one foot. And we want about a quarter of a foot. So we're going to go down to about maybe a third of a foot. So we're going to go down to about 0.1. And that should be pretty close to our scene scale. So that should be good. Uh, we have this set to fluid, obstacle, and domain. So let's try a simple bake. I'm going to save it. You always want to save before baking anything. But I think I'm ready to do a low res bake and uh, kind of test this out. So let me try what a bake would look like now. So I clicked bake. You can see it says it will require 23 megabytes. And you get this little fluid simulation bar here. And this might take a little bit of time. You can see it already simulating in real time here. If I kind of scrub through the frames, you'll see three frames has baked so far. And uh, I'm just going to continue to let this bake. And uh, I'll come back to you guys once it's finished and we can see what it's looking like. So we'll be right back, guys. All right, I'm back uh, after about five minutes, I'd say. And uh, whoops, I have a simulation that looks pretty decent. So I'm going to scrub through this and you'll see at 10, my cup starts moving. The water starts splashing around and it looks pretty sweet. I got quite a bit of fluid right here. You know, you can always make this smaller if you wanted less, but I like the look of that, and I like the look of this frame right here. But um, it's too low quality to use yet. I'm gonna bake it at a high quality, and maybe add a few more particles in. So I'm gonna generate maybe point, point, 0 0.1 particles. And tracer particles, I don't think we need to, uh, I don't think we need to generate tracer particles. I'm not quite sure what a tracer particle is, but I'm just gonna leave that on nothing. So I like this. And uh, this is probably the frame I'm going to use. So basically, there's no need for me to simulate more than 24 frames them because I'm only going to use this frame, really, for my still. Unless you were rendering this out for an animation, in which case you'd probably want quite a, more f quite a lot more frames. But um, yeah, I mean, this can be animated as well. I'm just going for a still. But if you wanted to animate it, by all means, do that. So I'm just going to change this to end at 24 instead of 48 and end my bake at one second instead of two seconds. All right, so I'm going to change my quality up to be about 120. That's going to take a little bit more memory and a little bit more time, maybe 20 minutes or something this time. But I did cut my bake time in half by going down to 24. So that will help a lot. And um, all right, I'm going to bake this out. So baking and I'll be back with you guys when that's done. All right, so our high quality bake is now done. This is just the preview that you see here. I forgot to mention this earlier. The viewport display is set to our preview, which is just 45 divisions right now. And if we want to see what our final result looks like, we will switch to final. I'm going to quick save just before I do that because it's going to load in a high quality mesh. So final. Ooh, there we go. Yes, that looks super nice. You see this kind of uh, weird looking uh, transformed outside and uh, this can just be scaled down if you're using it for animation or as it, what I'm going to do it can be uh, smoothed out in the sculpt mode to make it look a little nicer. So there's a lot of frames here to choose from. I'm going to go hit Z and you can see there's a lot of good frames here of splashing if you wanted to use say that frame but I'm going to go with that frame right here. So um, I'm going to convert my mesh now. I'm done with my fluid. It looks great. And I'm not animating it in this tutorial. If you want to animate it, well, then don't do this next step because it will convert it to a mesh. And that's what I'm going to do. So with it saved, I'm going to click Apply. And you'll see it's now, if I tab it edit mode, a mesh. So now I can, let me just go to Object Mode, tab out edit mode. Now I can switch to Sculpt Mode on my fluid. Make sure you have your fluid selected. I'm going to choose smooth. Hit F to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm going to kind of smooth out this uh, nasty looking area around the outside of my uh, wine glass. So kind of smoothening out all those ripples so they look nice and clean and good. Some up here. Make sure not to smooth the particles because some of them you will just make disappear if you hit them. 
and you don't want that because they look great. I'm going to smooth some of this out, smooth some of that out, smooth, just basically until it's all back into the mesh. So that's about the uh, amount of smoothening you want to do. That's what I'm going for. All right. You can maybe turn your strength up a little bit now to make this go a little bit faster. But just smooth that in. Smooth that in. Smooth it in. All right. It looked pretty clean. A little bit over here. A little bit over here. A little over there. And a little up here still. Zooming in to get the more detailed areas. My middle mouse wheel. I will just finish this up right there. Perfect. And... Smooth that right there. Real good. Good. Don't want to touch it anymore. That's good. Now, if I go back to solid frame, you can see it's all within the glass. It can be, you know, it can be smoothed out a little bit more if your glass is a little bit thicker than mine or something. But um, don't go too much, and uh, it should be good. Yeah, I just kind of push it back a little bit because my glass is, has a little bit of a thickness to it. So I'll do that. There we go. Oh, over here too. <laughs> and sometimes going to wireframe mode with Z can help reveal the areas you want to smooth out a little bit more. But uh, that's pretty nice. There we go. There we go. There we go. Just kind of smoothing out the edge along there. And it will be good. Excellent. You can also scale this down a little bit if you want to. Um, just a tiny bit though, like hit S, hold shift, just drag it down a tiny bit, and it'll be good. So we're ready to set up the materials and rendering of our scene. So I'm going to do pretty simple. Um, I'm going to use cycles, and one thing to keep in mind is you need to be using Blender 2.71, because I'm going to do some volumetrics. I can move my uh, fluid emitter here to a different layer, just hitting M, clicking and moving it. So let's first set up our environment. Basically our environment, click use nodes and make it white, just completely white. And that's all we gotta do for that. <laughs> that's pretty simple. Now I'm going to add a plane for the ground counter area, whatever you want to call it. So I'm gonna hit shift A, add in plane, scale that up a little bit and just move it to be underneath there. And this will have a material, new material of being just completely white as well. All right, so that's all our environment consists of. Now I have some lights that I want to place around. So first starting over here, I'm going to go to top view, shift A, add in a plane. Scale it down a little bit, hit R twice, and I can kind of free rotate it. I'm going to rotate it like so. So it's kind of pointing at my mesh. Very good. Scale it down a little bit. Now the material of this is going to be an emission, because this is what I'm going to use to light my scene. And the reason for this is I'll get some nice reflections in the glass of my uh, square lights. And that will look really cool. And that's what I'm looking for. So this will be an emission of about 6 in the strength. And I'm going to shift duplicate this. Pull it over here. And rotate it so it's facing from this direction. Like that. And this one, I'm going to make it its own material by hitting the 2 here. This is only going to be like a four strength, so I have a little variation in the strength of the lights. Now I'm going to select both those, shift D, rotate them around, and pull them back here for some backlighting. That's basically it for the lights. Very simple lighting setup. Uh, I think I might want to zoom in with my camera a little more, so I'm going to pull it out and take the focal length up to like 100. Just so these lamps aren't in it, I'm going to kind of scale those out and move them up a little bit too. Very nice. I maybe move my camera up a little bit as well so I get all those bubbles. Pull my camera out a little bit. Just kind of position it nicely for a wide angle. Um, my shot that I rendered out in the, saw in the beginning, I changed it to be a long angle by flipping these two values. But um, this will be fine. Move that lamp out of the scene. Very good. Now let's add in our material for our glass. This is going to be super simple. It's just going to click materials, whoop, right there, new material, delete our diffuse texture, or shader, and add in a glass shader. We're going to leave it at 1.45, because that's considered a light glass, and I'm going to hook it up to the material. As for the color, 
Um, I don't want it to be completely white. I want it to be basically maybe a point nine seven five on the blue, and then point nine seven on everything else. So it gave it just a barely a blue tint, but not quite a hundred percent white. This is kind of important to keep a nice reflection going. So that's why I'm particular with my <laughs> colors on this. But that should do it for the uh, material of glass. I'm gonna quick save this. And if I switch my viewport to be rendered, we can see we're getting a pretty nice glass look here. We're getting this ref sharp reflection along the edge here. And uh, not getting really any reflection over here, but you can see I'm getting these square lights showing up. That's what I'm looking for up here, up there. And that looks pretty nice, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, my fluid mesh is kind of coming out a little bit here. Looks like I might have to scale it down a little bit. So select my fluid and scale it down a little bit, like so. All right. If you were doing a simulation, obviously you couldn't scale fluid. You would be scaling the cup up a little bit larger. So now if I render, that's clean along there. And that looks a lot better. That's looking pretty good. Might have to scale it down a tad more, I don't know, maybe something like that, just to be safe. You don't want to go too much though. And let's add in our fluid material. So the reason you have to be using Blender 2.71 for this is because I'm going to be doing a little bit of volume absorption. And that will be giving it a cool looking uh, wine material. So let me switch to rendered so I can see what's happening as it's happening. Alright, that's good. So my material for this is going to be not a diffuse texture. I'm going to shift a, add in a volume absorption. This will be plugged into the volume and you can see it turns to nothing. I'm going to make the density about 18. So you can see we're getting that showing up now. You can see where it's going to be darker colored and where it's going to be lighter colored. And this is basically going to be the darker areas will be my red wine showing up. So I'm going to choose my material. Um, First, let me make this almost completely white, but not 100% not white, something like that. I'll make my color a nice kind of slightly purple, grapey kind of wine. Something like that will be good, I think. And now I'm going to add in one more shader. This is going to be glass, Whoop. but I'm going to use the IO, IOR value of 1.333 which is the IOR value of water. And I'm going to make this completely white. It already is. I'm going to hook this up to the surface. And there you will go. <laughs> there you will go. You'll see we get our nice wine material starting to show up now. It's looking really good. Um, this black area might be coming from a little bit of a collision with the glass. So you may have to scale down your fluid a little bit if you're getting that. Let me see scale and we'll see if that fixes it mm, maybe not let me command z that Whoop. all right let me see if that's not intersecting with my mesh there at all it very possibly could be so you might have to just do a little bit of smoothening out in those areas if you see anything that looks kind of strange like that maybe in here go sculpt mode and kind of smooth that area out a little bit in there Anyway, you get something that looks a little weird. Chances are you might have to smooth, smoothify a little bit. A little bit over there. All right. Should be better, hopefully. All right, so let's, let's kind of start our render now. We'll set up a nice render. I'm going to change, well, yeah. I'm gonna change my focal length or my composition to be how it was in my first render. So 1920 by 1080 except switching it like so. Grab my camera view here. Grab it in for a nice close up here. Grabbing and hitting the middle mouse button. Move along the X axis a little bit to kind of fit it in there nicely. That should do it for the angle pretty much. Just kind of fitting in there nicely. Very good. Now I'm gonna add some focal length to my camera. So check limits. And let's change the distance here. You can see that yellow line is our focal length. Let's center it on the splash right there. Let's give our f-stop, change our aperture type to f-stop. And let's make this about an f-stop of 2. Yeah, 1.8. Uh, blades and rotation doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to go 9 
and uh, just a random number of 15 for the rotation. Doesn't really matter. Save. And let's do our first render now. So uh, I'll render out at just a 200 samples. It should just take a minute. Save my scene. Let's switch to solid view. And render. Here we go. Now I'll jump back after this finishes, but I'm expecting it to look pretty nice. So uh, let this render and I'll be right back. Okay, and there is our render. You can see our volume absorption shader really doing its job with the uh, drops here and stuff. And you can also play around with the density on that to get some different effects. I have a little bit more fluid in my cup than my first one, but that might be good. A little bit of a black area here, which may be some collisioning. You might want to smooth it out, but it doesn't look too bad. And uh, that's going to do it for the modeling aspect. I'm going to do a little bit of color correcting now to kind of finish our scene. So I'm going to go to compositing up here, switch from default to compositing, use nodes, you can see our glass shows up there, and backdrop. Now if I go control shift, it will add in a viewer node when I click my render layer, and uh, uh, V to zoom out, and I can see what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to do a basic color job and a vignette on this scene. So first shift A, add color, color balance and drop it in here with the viewer node. So I basically want to make the blacks a little bit blacker and up the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to take my, this is basically my lower colors here, my blacks, drop that down slightly. It doesn't look too bad, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, same with the middle one here, drop it down a little bit and then lift these a little bit. Yeah, gives you just a little bit of a cleaner scene. And I like that. So there we go. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe dark it down just a tad. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And turn that up a little bit. Very good. I like that. So that is the color correcting I'm going to do. Maybe just a tad less of that. Oh, I'm not going to be too picky about it. That's good. I'm going to do a quick vignette. So to do this, you may have done this before, but it's just going to be a distort, lens distortion, plug that in there with the viewer, and then shift A, add in a, where is it? A filter converter, math node. I'm going to add in math node. I'm going to change this to greater than. We'll make it zero. And then we'll make it distort on our lens distortion one. So this gives us our nice oval. All we have to do is blur that now with a filter blur node. Make it fast Gaussian relative. And put it along the Y. Give it like 15% blur on both the X and Y. Maybe more, maybe 17. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you want. And then we'll just multiply this with a color mix node over our original image. So plug the original image in top, plug the vignette in bottom, and switch the mix node to multiply. And we have a nice vignette. Use the factor to adjust how much you want. So there you go. Now you can just connect that up with your uh, composite node, and it should appear down here. If I uh, switch this over to be our render results, and let's just update that. And you can see you get the vignette on there, and uh, everything's looking pretty nice. Might make this a little less faded, but that is it, guys. That is our wine glass tutorial. Maybe make this 0.9. Depends how much vignette you want. 0.85 might be good. That is the finished result. Shift space to go full screen. I uh, hope you guys had some fun doing this and it was a good introduction for you guys into the fluid simulator using some volumetrics and blender and just having a good time. So um, that'll do it for my wine glass tutorial. I hope you guys had fun and uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.